so. Hey, so yeah, again, we're going to be talking here about the SANS.edu Cloud Security Certificate Program here. And on the next slide, just a, a very quick introduction here, right? Hey, we, I think most of us have already met, but you know, I'm Frank Kim, uh, been with uh, SANS for a long time now, writing and teaching various courses. Along with me here is Kim Kafka, who is uh, specializing in admissions for our graduate program and the graduate certificate programs. And so to start, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kim here to kick us off. Terrific. Just a few quick housekeeping items that I wanted to mention. During this session, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. At the end of this, all the slides and all of the information you'll be getting, we're both happy to answer any questions in real time. And sometimes it's fun to just have that real live interaction. We'll also have a SANS hallway channel available as well for any that we may not get to at the end. So today I just wanted to go over a quick agenda. We're going to do an overview of the college, um, how it got started and what it's all about. We will also especially focus on the Cloud Security Graduate Certificate Program. We will have a curriculum um, breakdown and get an in-depth understanding of what and why this curriculum is necessary. And we'll conclude with some of the SANS Graduate School and college policies and admissions requirements before we get into that Q&A. So just to take you way back for a high level overview, a brief background, the SANS Technology Institute or SANS.edu is an independent subsidiary of SANS.org. We typically refer to these entities by their URLs in order to distinguish the two. SANS.edu was founded in 2005. So our programs are built on and around the SANS classes and the SANS curriculum with GX certification exams serving as the final assessment in most of our courses. We are regionally accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, which is the same accreditation held by schools such as Johns Hopkins, Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, just to name a few. So we're in very good company there. And because of this accreditation, we are eligible for most employer tuition assistance programs. And we're also able to certify VA educational benefits, including the GI Bill. We have over a thousand active students and we are currently one of the top five largest programs focused solely on cybersecurity. A quick overview of the degrees and the programs that we offer look like this. SANS.edu has one master's program. It's a master's in information security engineering. This program was designed and built for leaders in the field. It was built to give them hands-on technical skills but also the ability to manage projects and teams on a technical level, as well as communicate up to the C-suite and understand business needs of any company and organization. In addition to this master's program, we have graduate certificate programs. These are shorter, technically focused progressions of courses that map to individual job roles. This includes our newest program, which is the cloud security program. And then lastly, in 2019, we launched our first program at the undergraduate level. This is a certificate in applied cybersecurity. And then at the end of 2020, we launched our first two bachelor's programs. Um, these are for people who are transitioning into the field, newer to the field, or they don't have a bachelor's degree yet and would like to get SAN certifications and start on a SANS.edu pathway. It should be noted that all of these programs now include our exciting cloud elective coursework um, as well. So they've been added to the program. So as promised, we're going to focus today on the cloud security program. And now I'm going to turn it over to Frank to get us going. Perfect, thanks so much. And uh, hey, just a quick reminder, Kim just mentioned this, but we do have in Slack here, the hallway-sans-edu channel. Feel free to go ahead and uh, join that one. Ask any questions along the way. Feel free to ask any questions in uh, Zoom here as well. Now, in terms of the Cloud Security Graduate Program, let's start off a little bit with the, the why here. Why are we here? And I know this has come up in some previous conversations and people have been mentioning the Cloud Security Ace. And you know, as we talk to different students and customers and different people at different enterprises, we realized that different organizations and people are at different steps along their journey to becoming a cloud security expert, what we like to call the cloud security ace, as is represented by the little icon here. And as you're kind of developing your skills and your knowledge and your experience, 
what we want to try to give you with this graduate certificate in cloud security is a flight plan, if you will, in terms of, hey, what do you need to do perhaps first, second, and third, depending on your existing and current level of experience. And so that's the, the journey that we want to try to talk a little bit about today. And on the very next slide here, right, a little bit of background. And, you know, we've been talking about cloud up to this point. That's why we're all here. But we want to give a little bit of a, a compare and contrast. And here on the slide, of course, we've got Gartner's Magic Quadrant, which Gartner, the research organization, goes around and, and surveys and researches various technology domains and companies and offerings. And we've got the, the Gartner's Cloud Infrastructure and Platforms offerings. And on the left-hand side here, we've got their Gartner Magic Quadrant from 2014. And just glancing at the left-hand side of this slide, you can see that the, the landscape was a lot more complex than it is today on the right-hand side with Gartner's latest magic quadrant. We've got clear three leaders in infrastructure and platform cloud services. That's AWS, Microsoft, and Google with GCP. Now, cloud has actually been around for a long time, formally cloud in terms of AWS, offering their first ever service all the way back in 2006. So yes, kind of modern cloud, if you will, has been around for 15 years now, right? Can you believe that? So this is a little bit of background in terms of where we stand today. And on the very next slide here, right, we've got a little bit of uh, research. It's even though cloud has been around for 15 years, well, it turns out that we are still in the very early innings of enterprise cloud adoption. And it, uh, it's been shown that only approximately 20% of enterprise workloads have actually moved to the public cloud with this adoption, as we see in the graph here, increasing, accelerating as we move forward. And if we think about the, the internet and the, the web, I really consider the, the web to be kind of the, the first, if you will, generation of uh, the internet. For the last 20 years, the web has really defined of what we do from a technology perspective. Now with cloud, I think that this is the paradigm that is going to really define what we do for the next 20 years as well. So why do we mention this background? Well, for us all as security, cybersecurity professionals, this is a huge opportunity for not only our organizations, but for our careers as well. So we wanna be ready to meet this growing need for cloud security in the marketplace. And here on the next slide, uh, we've got some, we're gonna get into some uh, details here, right? And what are these roles? How do we go about getting ready? Well, over the last year and a half plus, we've been talking to a lot of students, a lot of customers, a lot of different organizations. And it is very clear that no matter your role in the organization, whether it's a manager, an architect, an engineer, or an analyst, right? People, organizations are gearing up to try to develop cloud security specific skills. Now we mentioned on this slide, cloud security specifically. Now, to be honest, we don't so much see people with this specific job title well, on mass. We see some, but most of the time right now we see people with titles of yeah, security manager or security lead or security engineer and so on. But they are now thrust into having responsibilities for various cloud security activities on their team, in their, uh, in their departments and so on. So with this as background, right, I'm gonna to move to the next slide here and talk a little bit about, well, if that's the why, why do we need to get ready for this change that cloud is bringing about? The question then becomes, how do we go about doing this? Well, in the classes that we're going to be talking about momentarily, we, we, we try to focus not only on the information itself, but hey, how do you get better at something? How do you learn something? You've got to practice. And it's been said, you've got to practice upwards of 10,000 hours to become an expert in a particular domain. So what we try to do with our various offerings in the graduate certificate program and the curriculum overall is to give you as much opportunity to practice hands-on as possible. How do you learn the cloud? Well, you learn about it by getting your hands dirty and actually doing stuff in the cloud as well. So the various courses that we have, we've got a number of, a combination of what we see here on the slide. All of our cloud courses have some sort of course workbook with not only high level, but detailed step-by-step -step labs to 
deploy various services to the cloud, secure your cloud infrastructure. And it's not just about the cloud services themselves. You've also got to have some sample applications because what is the whole point of moving to the cloud? It's to get application features and business functionality to deliver to your customers faster, more effectively, and even, even cheaper in a lot of cases. So in addition to that detailed VM that has a course workbook, those detailed steps, in addition to those sample applications, we also give you a ton of cloud infrastructure code, whether that's in the form of Terraform code, cloud formation code, and so on, so that at any time, even after class, you can go and replay and redeploy all of the infrastructure to various cloud providers multiple times. So you can go back and learn repeatedly. We've had students come to class and say, hey, I actually went through the labs, not only once in class, but I went through all of the labs multiple times after class as well. So this is a little bit of the, the how in terms of giving you this hands-on information, these hands-on playgrounds. And on the next slide here, this brings us to, okay, well, what, what is actually in the cloud certificate program here? So it's broken up into two different categories. We've got some required courses. You can see here that we have two required core courses. We've got SEC 488, which is our cloud security essentials course. Now this course primarily has coverage of AWS and Azure using those two cloud providers as examples for what are the foundational essential bits of knowledge that you need to build your cloud security fundamentals. We've got a corresponding GIAC certification that's called the GCLD, the G Cloud certification associated with that class. Now with this fundamental foundational knowledge in place, we also have the SEC 510 class. Now this goes even into more detail and depth from a technical perspective. Right off the bat, at the beginning of day number one, you deploy the equivalent insecure infrastructure to all three major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP using Terraform. And you are thrown in right away in terms of understanding, learning about the differences and similarities in the major areas that these cloud providers offer, identity, network, compute, logging, monitoring, and so on. And so if you wanna get into even more depth and detail of what you need to do to secure your public cloud platforms and services, this class, and the corresponding GPCS certification for public cloud security is the one for you. All right, so if we go ahead and move on to the next slide here, that was information about the two foundational required core courses. Now we've also got uh, three elective courses to choose from. Now you have to choose two out of these three classes for the cloud security certificate program itself. And the first one here at the top is our SEC 522 Web Application Security class. Now, why do we have this as part of the cloud curriculum? Well, remember, I just mentioned the whole point of using cloud services and platforms is to develop and deliver and get application functionality, business functionality to your customers more quickly, more reliably, more effectively. Well, when you deploy these applications, they also, we also need to understand how to secure them. And this is what this class is all about in terms of securing your applications, the various services, and the corresponding APIs. The associated G Web certification with this class is very useful um, in this regard. Now, we also have the SEC 540 class. This is our cloud security and DevSecOps automation class. And from a modern cloud perspective, you know, I've been earlier, a few number of years ago, I was involved in a couple of lift and shifts, right? And a lot of times if organizations are just getting started with cloud, they might lift their existing workloads in their on-premise data centers and shift those over into the cloud. Now, certainly that's a good way to get started. That's a way to get started, but it's not taking full advantage of the cloud. Why not? Well, you're not taking advantage of infrastructure, the immutability, right? The uh, ephemerality that cloud actually provides. To do that, you wanna have some automated pipelines in place. So you need to understand the DevSecOps process, your CI CD pipelines, so that you can integrate and inject security controls into that automated pipeline. This is what 540 and the GCSA certification is all about. Now, depending on your particular role at your company, in your organization, you might 
right, have a little bit more of a focus on attack. And this is where the SEC 588 cloud pen testing class comes into play. This is for testers who want to assess your infrastructure and applications hosted in these public cloud platforms. And the corresponding GCPN certification associated with this is uh, very helpful in that regard as well. Now, all of these classes that I just mentioned not only have the corresponding workbook with detailed step-by-step -step instructions, not only have some sort of vulnerable applications and systems, but also have various infrastructure code that you can utilize and virtual machines that you can use to redo your exercises at any time. Depending on the class, I see a, a question here from Sandeep. Depending on the class, some of the classes are gonna require you to bring your own free tier, right? AWS, Azure, or GCP account where you've got a certain number of hours, units, and so on in terms of free capacity that you can utilize for the class. Very easy to sign up for those free accounts. And going forward in some classes, right, we're looking to have some built-in cloud-based services for you to utilize as well. But short story right now is that, yeah, depending on the class, you've got to bring your own free tier cloud account. So that, that also is, lets you get set up to redeploy these bits of infrastructure even after the class is over as well. So moving on to the next slide here, right? I just want to mention it's uh, in addition to what we have in the certificate program that we just talked about, we also have various free resources here in terms of our cloud landing page in the lower right-hand corner, right? And that will link you to all of these different resources, webcasts that are archived and recorded on our YouTube channel, various white papers, various cheat sheets, posters, blog posts. We've also got a brand new, what we call the Head in the Clouds YouTube series, where Ken Hartman is uh, giving various tips on specific skills that you might want to build out in terms of getting more and more familiar with the cloud. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Kim to talk a little bit more about the, the program and we can get to some of these additional questions that have come in. So Kim, back over to you. Terrific. Thanks so much, Frank. I learned so much every time and the curriculum is just so exciting. So just a few things before we close. There are a few academic elements to the SANS.edu structure that are a bit different from SANS as you may know it and just something to keep in mind. Um, so wanted to discuss a little bit upfront our waiver policy. This is a very popular question we get. I've taken SANS classes before. Can they apply to the program? So because we are an accredited college, there's a 25% waiver limit to the number of outside courses, so SANS.org courses, that can count towards a degree or program at the college. So for a certificate program, that 25% equals three credits or the one SANS class with the associated GX certification. And for the master's program, that 25% is equal to nine credits or three SANS classes and their associated GX certs. And all of those GX certifications must be current and in good standing. All of these waivers are granted prior to a student's matriculation. So you will know coming into the program what's accepted, what you have in front of you in terms of tuition and payments. Um, and if you have specific questions, definitely reach out to the admissions team because that's what we're here for, to really walk you through those steps and assess everyone's individual situation. Now to talk about the funding. We have a couple different options. So our most popular funding option for students is the corporate tuition assistance. And you should definitely check with your employer for details. Everyone's different. All eligibility requirements are different. But because we are an accredited institution, we do qualify for most of these programs. And sometimes we can even assist in making individual adjustments to academic plans to allow for the most minimal amount of out-of-pocket expenses so we can coordinate that with your tuition assistance program. The SANS Technology Institute is also approved to accept and certify veterans for VA educational benefits, and this includes the GI Bill. So this funding covers live events in Maryland or any online modality course. Your BAH, which we get a lot of questions on, is different based on how you take the course. Our website has some of those details and you can also speak with us directly, again, about your specific case and we will go through to the best of our ability what that looks like for you. Lastly, our tuition payment plan is available for qualified certificate graduate students, as well as for our master's degree students. 
So a good deal of the tuition that could be paid out of pocket gets split over time. And we just take the full tuition, cut it into equal payments, monthly payments, and there are no fees and no interest. So it's a fantastic way to sort of finance that education if you want to get through the curriculum at a faster pace and not be held up by some larger tuition payments. And lastly, if your company does offer vouchers, I just wanted to mention, there are some that can be used at sans.edu. So if it's a universal voucher, the graduate school will accept it. So definitely worth asking the admissions team and we will check on that for you. And then just before we get dive right into those questions, I just wanted to go over our graduate admissions. So as you probably gathered, we are a little bit different than just an apply and come into the, the school. These programs are not designed for someone who is newer to cybersecurity at our graduate level or master's level. We're really looking for applicants that have at least 12 months of prior professional experience, and they must have a bachelor's degree in addition to that. So we're looking for a minimum 2.8 GPA, and we require that students be currently employed in the field when they're applying and enrolling in these programs. Because of COVID and things that have happened over the last 18 months, there is a bit of flexibility there. So if you do have experience, but something has changed in your employment strategy over the last you know, year or so, please talk to us and we will talk about specific um, nuances to that policy. So moving right along, when you apply, um, you will receive a decision within 30 days. So I have posted the application um, processes up here. The rounds for certificates and our bachelor's degree program are monthly. On the 15th of every month, applications get submitted to committee and you will hear from us 30 days later on the 15th of the following month with an admissions decision. For the master's degree program, right now we accept those applications quarterly and you can see the dates posted. So the next up is the August 1st deadline. You should plan for about 60 days from the time your application is submitted until the time you can start a first class. And I like to mention that because it's not kind of an apply and start. There is a process to go through. So now the best part of the day, questions. And I'm sure Frank, you can sort of lead the way. I bet there will be a lot. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot, Kim. There's a number of questions that came in related to kind of um, options for enrolling and kind of uh, government benefits and, and things like that. And I see that uh, Mark and others, I think are responding here in Slack. There is one question here is, hey, is there a certification for individuals in the audit assurance path? Uh, Kim, today we've been talking just about the cloud security graduate certificate. But uh, Kim, do you want to talk a little bit about the cybersecurity management certificate as well? Sure. In terms of the curriculum itself, or yeah, yeah, you know, I can't see the questions, Frank. So I'm, I'm just going to listen to. Oh it. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. The uh, well, so we do have, you know, separate from this cloud security uh, certi graduate certificate, we also have a graduate certificate yes. program in cybersecurity management. Correct. And uh, Compton, to your question, there are a couple of. Uh, electives that are audit related. So, hey, it's not just an audit specific path. It's more of a cybersecurity management leadership path of which audit is an important part of those governance activities. So that might be something, Compton, that you want to check out here in terms of an alternative uh, certificate program. Yep. It's a 15 credit hour program as well. So you do leave this program with five GX certifications. Great. Now I see another question here, um, and I, I'm gonna address this to you, Kim. Is there a possibility to do the program with courses being done as part of the work study program? Unfortunately, no. At the graduate school, we do not participate in the work study. And I know sans.org has had amazing success with that program, and it's a fabulous way to do it if you can, but we do not do that at the graduate school. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then another question here is once people you know, graduate or complete the certificate program, you know, what, what is in place to support those students after post-graduation, after completion? That's an excellent question. So typically we get this question more at the undergraduate level, because again, when you're coming in at the graduate side, typically in, in normal times, if I will, our students have been employed and they are currently employed and a lot of you are using tuition assistance, but we do have a career assistance program in place. It's growing exponentially by the day, to be quite honest. It is just evolving and becoming, it's taking on a life of its own. 
We um, have a 93% job placement rate at the moment um, for students going through our curriculum. And 54% of that 93 is being snatched up by employers prior to even completing the programs. So we have a resume repository that students can post resumes and our, our whole network of employers look at, and they are just, we can't keep them in there long enough. They are just getting snatched away. And as you can probably imagine, this field and having this type of deep specialty in cybersecurity, this is what the employers are looking for. And there are more jobs than people to fill them. So we are just having a wonderful time with career placement. Um, there are networking events. There are people that review your resume, go over interview skills. So there is a whole host of options for you if you are job hunting and you know looking for support at the end of a program. Wow, those are some impressive statistics. You know, I don't, I didn't remember that 93% off the top of my head. And, you know, I think maybe one reason that's related to that is we talked about earlier the, the hands-on labs. And when I'm in a hiring position, you know, when I've been hiring over the years, I'm always looking for kind of experience. Have students, have people played with these tools, use these tools? Do they have that type of experience before? And, you know, that's what we try to give you in the program overall. A uh, number of other questions. Sorry, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, was just going to, I was just going to add that we have heard from employers that they would rather students come in with GX certifications than degrees at the end of the day, you know, depending on the role, because they know, much to your point, Frank, that they have that hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. Great. Hey, uh, a number of other questions here. Does, in terms of the tuition payment plan, does mm -hmm. this also apply to the certificate program? Yes. Yes. The grad, any programs at the graduate level have the tuition payment plan option. Great. And then, um, you know, you mentioned this in passing earlier, but with the master's program, the master's degree, which is separate from the graduate certificate that we're talking about now, mm -hmm. can you talk a bit about the cloud security courses that are included in the master's degree program? Sure, absolutely. In fact, what we do in the master's program is in your third block, it's the master's program is taken into blocks, block one, two, three, and four. In your third block, that's when you get your elective options. And if you choose a focus area, that's where you would pull in those electives that solely focus on the cloud security program. So I believe that all the courses that you just mentioned as part of the cloud um, certificate are available as choices in electives for the master's program. Maybe not the very first one, but mm -hmm. we can, we can, those are nuances that we can determine, but you could come out of it with a sort of focus in that area. Mm -hmm. Great. And then, you know, how easy is it for students, people outside of the U.S. to enroll in this program? It is, so, so easy is a trick question, but I would say it's extremely doable. We have international students all the time. The tricky part is your transcript evaluation, which needs to be evaluated by WES, which is the World Education Services. We have a link on our website that specifically talks about requirements for our international students, but there is no sort of downside to doing that. Um, once we have your academic background translated to, to US academic standards, we can easily have you apply and get you into the program. And all of our courses, no matter what program, can be taken on demand and virtually. So mm -hmm. being live is not a problem if you can't. Excellent. Hey, uh, one question came in here about, you know, somebody has, uh, Daniel has a number of certifications, experience in security, but bachelor's is in physics. Is this acceptable for the master's program or would additional education requirements be needed? That's an excellent question. We do not care what your bachelor's major is. Um, a lot of these programs, a lot of these are very new. And if you received a bachelor's degree 10 years ago, they may not be in existence yet. Um, what we're looking for is skills to date. So if you have experience in the field, but a bachelor's degree in something different, absolutely fine. All right. Yeah, Mark has a good question here is in terms of people figuring out where they should focus, how, how they should move forward, is there some sort of practice aptitude assessment? Mm -hmm. Good question. That's really a question to sort of talk with admissions about. We're going to, we will listen to your background and make suggestions and um, kind of go from there. We can take that offline if the person who asked the question is interested. Because um, the aptitude assessment tests your aptitude for the field, but not necessarily a program. Mm -hmm. So Frank, it looks like we are, I don't want to infringe upon their time. How are we doing on time? Do we have a few more minutes here? We do have, yeah, we have a few more minutes left. Good, sorry. <laughs> I didn't want them to kick us out. 
hey, we, we, we've got a couple questions more specific to the master. So I'm going to wait on those for a minute. But, you know, in terms of this certificate program, the graduate certificate, um, what can you talk again a little about the, the cost involved? Yes. So each course in the graduate program, each three credit course is five thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and that is standard across all the graduate certificate programs. The master's degree has a little bit of a different price point. We can talk about that at another time. And it's a pay as you go. So we don't require full payment up front. Students ask me that all the time. You pay for the class that you are taking, which is why we only have a minimum requirement of one course per year at the graduate certificate level with a maximum 30 month kind of end date. And that is just so that you can sort of spread out your payments if you just want to do one or two a year or use employer tuition assistance that it has a certain cap, we can help you get through the program. It's a slower pace, but you can certainly do it that way. Mm -hmm. All right. So this was about the cloud certificate certificate program. You know, let's switch over to the master's specifically. Santosh okay. is asking, hey, for the master's, is there a master's in security management? Great question. And we used to have one if you've been a SANS follower for all these years. And what we found was that they were so similar, the two programs, the cybersecurity engineering and the management were so similar. So what we have done is we've merged them. And if you want a management focused curriculum, you would take those in your electives. And if you look at the master's curriculum, there is also a few management presentation coursework built into it already. But then you can choose your electives from the management graduate cert program. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, a um, couple more questions about the master's. Can you talk a little bit about the differences in the course fees for the master's and bachelor's programs too? Yes. So the master's degree program, we really do it more per credit because if you notice in the curriculum, there's a lot of one, not a lot, but there's several one credit courses. So each course credit is $1,375. So you can calculate and it's a 36 credit program. So you mm -hmm. can base that from there. If you do have waivers or you bring in other, you know, acceptable um, GX certs, that will deduct from the tuition. Mm -hmm. The bachelor's program is a similar breakdown. If someone has specific questions, let's talk about it because again, it has some credits involved and there are some nuances to the bachelor's program that I'd want to go over with an individual. Okay, great. And this looks like it's going to be the last question here. Does it, for the master's or bachelor's, do you get any credits or any credit points if you already have a master's in computer science? Unfortunately, no. The credit points come in the admissions acceptance. We love seeing additional degrees. We love looking at academic backgrounds just to sort of see how students do in an academic setting. Um, and they are considered at admission time, but we do not accept any waiver credits at the master's level. For the bachelor's degree, you do need 70 college credits to apply to the program. So in that situation, yes, outside credit will apply. It doesn't apply necessarily to our curriculum. It's just a mandatory requirement to get into our bachelor's program. Great. Hey, well, that brings us to the end of our time here and the end of the questions. If anyone thinks of anything afterwards, please feel free to go ahead and reach out to Kim at the contact information down here below. And uh, we'd love it if you guys would consider the graduate certificate program from the SANS Technology Institute to help along your journey in becoming a cloud security ace.